Hi, in this video we will talk about how to create different types of area charts in ggplot. We would be using these four packages and using the gapminder built-in data set which has come from this package gapminder we would create a subset out of that. It has number of countries but we have selected these three countries so by filtering this data we have got the data only for these three countries and we'll be interested in the year and the life expectancy during those years. So there are two ways of plotting the chart. In one situation you would have the categorical values on the x-axis and in the second example we will talk about how would you handle the numerical values if you're using them on the x-axis. So let's get started with this example with categorical values on the x-axis. So the first chart which we draw is this where we would be using categorical value year on the x-axis and then fill would be based on the country. So using this example this is what we get notice that life expectancy seems to go quite high and the reason for that is because the data has been stacked on top of each other so by default that's what the area chart does so in this case this is stacking on top of each other and the life expectancy is actually going to 200 so that's not what we want so we would create another chart and in this case we would add this additional command in there position equals position dodge and this is what it does for us and notice that so I've actually added the, the points for each observation and I've also drawn um, the area chart which was there anyway so and you can similarly add line charts as well in there as well if you wanted so by simply saying John line. So we have everything now. The lines, the dots, and that's filled by the area based on the country. So far so good. Let's plot both these charts together on the side by side and see the difference. So this is our first chart which was stacking the data on top of each other and this is the second chart which is more practical and it actually uh, puts the data in a position dodge environment where it starts from this axis all the time. Okay now let's start using our second example. The second example as we said earlier was using the numerical values on the x-axis. So I'll be using the diamonds built-in data set and we would be interested in the, the cut and then the price for that cut. So there are different type of diamond cuts and based on that the price changes. So for our chart we would create a smaller subset of that by just using two cuts good and ideal and that's what we get. So ideal and good and we'll, we'll be using the price to plot the charts and in this chart we would be using the price which is a um, numerical value on the x-axis and we'll be using stat equals bin so that we can divide the prices into different bins and then uh, do a frequency count which is similar to the histograms And so this is what we get. We can change the number of bins. For example, in this case, it's telling us that the bins equals 30. We can pick a better bandwidth if we want or the bin width which we want. Let's say if we say bins equals 300, you would get 300 bins of uh, the price. So you would see your chart gets jittery. And if I reduce it to only three, you would notice that it has only created three different bins so the the shape of the chart has changed so let's stick with the uh, the default which is 30 and plot a 
chart. Now in the next chart, we would try to fix the position by introducing the position equals dodge and that's what we did earlier also because the data in, in the first chart is stacked on top of each other and this is what we get. So both the charts are actually dodged starting from this axis and you can clearly see the first envelope and the second envelope. In some cases you would want to plot the mean values or any other values as um, a vertical line on this axis. You can do that by using the GEOM V line and in this example we're going to use the mean price as an x-intercept. So the x-intercept is something um, like a vertical line and this is given by the v-line because when we have the v-line you would use the x-intercept. When you have the h-line or the horizontal line you would have to use the, the, the y-intercept. So in this case this is we need a x-intercept which is going to be the mean of the price and this is what we get. So it's a single line being drawn which is the mean of the overall data. But what if you wanted to have separate means for each of those um, groups. For example, we have two groups. One is good and one is ideal. And if you wanted to have separate means being drawn for them, we can do that. Before that, we will have to create another little data set called mu. And we are saying we want to group the data by cut and we want to summarize the data by the mean. And we want to label it as group.mean. So in this data set, we get two columns and two rows the first one being the the cut and the second one being the mean for the mean for the good cut diamonds and the second one is the mean for the ideal so using those two data sets we can create our little plot and the difference you would notice is that in the first plot in the actual plot we are using the data set ds which is our this data set, but when we want to plot the intercepts or the v-line, we are using the data equals mu, and the mu is that little data set which only has the means for each. So it will be actually plotting the mean value for, for each cut. So plotting that chart, we should expect two lines, one for the, the ideal, the mean for the ideal cut diamonds, and the other one is for the good cut diamonds, which is this. And sometimes you don't want to plot the actual count or the frequency. You want to show it as a, as a density chart. So you can do that quite easily. Instead of using stat equals bin in this case, we have used y equals double dot density double dot. So that would give you the density. So this is the density and you would have noticed that this is scientific notation. How would you convert this back into um, a normal standard numerical value? Um, quite easy and if you run this command once in your R session you would always get um, values like this which is the normal decimal values which you can identify quite easily. Now lastly we would plot another type of chart which will be um, position equals fill chart. So this is similar to the 100% stacked bar charts or um, something like this which can give you 100% stack. We can quite easily see the, the, the means for each and then we can see how what's the proportion of each type of cut. And notice that we have used scale y continuous labels equals scale percent and by using this we have converted these kind of values which was in, in decimal points into percentage so using this command we have converted this data presentation into into percentage and lastly we let's let's plot all the charts together and if you're wondering what i'm using there as PL1, PL2, etc. You can watch my other video which was spe specifically on the 
on the patchwork. Using patchwork we can combine charts in different ways and fashions and this is um, an example of that. We have all the charts being plotted together and uh, I hope you found this information useful. Thank you very much for watching this and I'll see you in the next one.